Hey everyone, this will be a video about the Virtual Data Optimizer, also known as VDO. We'll be working with this tool on RHEL 9, and I'll tell you why that's important in just a moment. But first, the RHCSA exam objective for today's topic is called Configure Disk Compression, which uses the VDO driver. Now, you may have already noticed that I'm using the Wayback Machine here to view a snapshot of this page from earlier this year. And that's because the current website doesn't show this objective anymore. However, I still think it's very important to know about this because there have been significant changes to how you work with video volumes on RHEL 9 compared to RHEL 8. Basically, the old video command and the services have been removed and you now manage video volumes through the LVM tools. So anyways, without further ado, let's jump right in. So first, we're going to want to open up our Virtual Machine Manager or VirtualBox if that's what you're running, and we're going to add some storage and memory to one of our virtual machines. So we'll bump up the memory first to about 2 gigabytes to help support VDO, and then we'll add a new disk. So we'll just go here and give it a name, and I'm going to set the capacity to 12 gigabytes. That should be good. And then I'm going to set the bus type to vert.io for performance reasons, but that isn't strictly necessary. So I hit finish, and here I have my new disk. Now I'm ready to start up this virtual machine, and uh, I'm going to log into it from my workstation VM so that we have a nice GUI terminal. So let me get the recording set up so that it's proper. Okay, so now I'll just log into App Server 1 and grab a root shell. And from here, I can run lsblk, and you'll see that our new virtual hard disk is indeed available. So that's pretty cool. And before we install VDO, make sure to run yum update to check if you have a new kernel to install. And if so, make sure to update and reboot. That's what you should always do before installing kernel modules like kVDO. As you can see, my VM is all good to go, so next we can install the packages with yum install lvm2 VDO and kmod-kvdo. As you can see, I already have them installed just to save some time, and uh, so I'll just clear the screen, and now we can take a look at the LVM VDO man page. So that'll just be man LVM VDO, and then we'll page down a little bit to this handy dandy section about creating a simple video logical volume. So as you can see here, it's using the LV create command. And as you already know, lvcreate requires us to specify a volume group. So we'll head out of man and create that volume group first. So we'll just run vds to check the volume groups that we currently have. And uh, as you can see, it's just the system one. So we'll just go ahead and run vgcreate, give it a name like video vg, it's pretty generic, and then the device, so dev vda. As you can see, it marked devvda as a physical volume, and then it created a volume group around that. So that's pretty cool. And then what we can do is run vgs again, and indeed our new volume group is available. So now what we can do is head back to man, and go back to that section. And here, um, with this lvcreate command, basically we want to set the type to video, we can give it a name, and then this dash L is for the data size, also known as the physical size. And this can be measured in gigabytes since we're using a capital L. But if you used a lowercase L, then you would do it in extents. Um, then the capital V is for virtual size or logical size. And then we specify the volume group. So we can just go ahead and take this example command and morph it into what we need. So we'll quit out of man and just paste that here. And we'll change the volume group to our video-vg. We can leave the logical size alone, 100 gigs is fine for this demo. And we'll change the physical size measurement to extents with a lowercase l, and set the logical volume size to fill all the unallocated space in the video-vg volume group. So we can do that with plus 100% free. Then we can give our uh, logical volume a new name. So I'll just call it video LV. And um, of course, the type will remain as video. So there we go. Um, we can just hit enter to that. And our new video logical volume is ready. 
So I'll just clear the screen. So now we can get into how to format our new video logical volume. So because it was provisioned with a lot more space than we actually have, formatting can take a while with the default options. So it's advisable to disable the discard blocks feature in MakeFS. So if you wanted to create an EXT file system, you would run makefs.ext4-e no discard and then provide the name of your volume. So I'm going to actually format this as XFS for this demo. So I'm actually going to run makefs.xfs-k, which is the equivalent of the no discard option, and then the video volume. So that's dev uh, video VG and then video LV. That's our logical volume. So I'll run that. And so that was pretty quick. And now we can mount this video logical volume. So first we're going to need to create a mount point in the mount directory and we'll call it my video. So we'll just run make dir mount my video. And there's our mount point. And then we can use the traditional mount command to get it mounted. So we can just run mount uh, dev video vg video lv and then our mount point mount my video. There we go. And if we run lsblk, there it is. Uh, it's mounted. So that's pretty neat. And we can set up some persistence by adding an entry to the fs tab file. So we can do that by running vim etc fs tab. And then in here, we'll add a new line and we'll provide the name of our logical volume. So that's dev video vg and then video lv and then uh, the mount point is mount my video and then the file system is xfs we'll just give default options for mount and then the uh, dump will be zero and the pass will also be zero so this is a pretty important file system that we want mounted on boot so there we go so we'll write that and then we'll just quickly unmount uh, my video and then we'll test the fs tab entry by using mount a. So um, if I run lsblk, you'll see that it's not mounted anymore. And if I run mount a, we can test that fs tab entry. And as you can see, it's working well because it's mounted again. Um, I'm going to clear the screen. So what I want to quickly show you now is how to check if compression and deduplication are enabled and how to tune them on and off. So they should be enabled by default, but we can check by running LVS with the dash O option and specifying the format to be LV underscore name, comma, video underscore compression, comma, video underscore deduplication. Just like that. And here we get a customized output telling us whether compression and deduplication are enabled, and indeed they are. So before we mess around with this, we should unmount our video volume with umount mount my video. And um, we can check the man pages to make sure that we're doing everything right by going to man LVM video again and scrolling down a little bit more to this helpful section about changing the compression and deduplication. So it boils down to using the LV change command and then dash dash compression and then setting a tunable Y for yes and N for no. So we can go ahead and just copy this and use it on our own video volume. So we'll just paste that here and set compression to no, and then specify dev video VG video LV, just like that. And it changed um, one of the properties of our video volume. We can also do the same thing with deduplication with dash dash deduplication. And there we go. So now if we go back to that formatted output, we'll see here that it's blank. So that means that compression and deduplication are, in, are, are disabled. So um, there's kind of no point in doing that unless you have a really specific need for it. So I'm going to turn those back on, just like so. And there we go. So now they should be enabled. All right, so lastly, I want to briefly demo some of the space savings that video offers to us. So I'll remount our video volume with mount, mount my video. There we go. And we'll just mess around a bit with some large files. So we'll cd to that directory. 
And in here, um, there's nothing going on. And if we check video stats, you'll see here that we have, well, I'll put it in human readable. You'll see here that we have about five gigabytes of overhead. So that doesn't look very good, but uh, we have a pretty small file system and it's still okay because we'll still be able to save plenty of space. So anyways, if we go ahead and just cat dev view random into a file like uh, gibberish, and we'll just wait a couple of seconds for that. Um, basically what I want to show is that our usage will go up. So I'll cancel that and we'll have this 1.4 gigabyte file of gibberish. So if we go back to video stats, you'll see here that our usage went up and our space saving went down. Um, now we can try to copy this file of gibberish into gibberish1 and gibberish2 and gibberish3. And um, if we check video stats again, you'll see here that um, nothing has changed and that's because we're using deduplication. So uh, pretty much it's not taking up any more space than it needs to. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can test a um, simple example of the compression by using a file full of zeros. So we can just cat um, dev zero into a file called emptiness. And we'll just give that a couple of seconds. This will be a lot bigger because um, it's a lot faster. And uh, we'll just list that. And we have 4.1 gigabytes of pure emptiness. So we can check video stats again, and you'll see here that our space saving went up by quite a bit. It went to 83%, and that's because this empty file is pretty easy to compress, even though it looks like it takes 4.1 gigabytes to store. So I mean, these are pretty cool space savings, um, but obviously this isn't really like a real world application. But still, the video layer will definitely come in handy for things like container images, large compressible text, things like that. So um, that's about going to wrap it up for this video. I hope uh, I did a good job explaining everything. And yeah, thanks for watching.